Good evening, lovely tubers. My name is the White Mexican, and welcome to Market Watch Investments. I have a plethora of cards to be showcasing for you guys tonight, and I do hope that you will enjoy. Gaming's Kickstarter tonight is going to be the 2022 Megatons. Now, there is several different sellers here that are selling around the rough range of 170 bones for a case of 12 tins. Now, we all know that it's popularly known that there's a lot of really good reprints that are coming out in the set. We don't know the rarity confirmations. I'm banking on Prismatic Secrets for some of these bigger cards, which should be pretty nice. Now, with that being said, I think this is a good deal. So this is N under MSRP. If you crack this down, so 170. Now, granted, this is the price before taxes, so keep that in mind. But without taxes, shipping is free for these for these sellers. But you know, you have to consider your taxes depending on what state you're in. Um, it's about 14-ish bones per megaton. So with MSRP being 19.99, this is definitely well under that. So I think it's a good deal if you guys want to invest for bold prices for the megatons. Um, personally, for myself, I, I really, I don't know if I want to invest in this personally. I invested in two cases of Power of the Elements, and I'm pretty hung stronghold towards that. Um, but as far as the Mega Tens, I really, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards more of just waiting and going for the singles that I want individually after this set drops on the economy. Um, if you, there's seven available here, and then once those are sold, you can also switch over to Mystic TCG. They have cases for 170 as well, X amount of how many they have, and then of course, the one only core TCG is also donning some cases for the same price. So, options for you guys to check out if you guys want to get a nice price and jump on the tins early. So, there's a lot of different side choices and conversations that have been going on with Power of the Elements and Tier Elements and Sprite and a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Now, one card that may be considered for side choicing, specifically for Sprite, is going to be and the played band on. And the band played on. Now, there isn't a lot of set different variants of this. There's two commons, and then there was a special edition ultra rare. Now, unfortunately, the ultra rares are about five ish bones, so they're not the most cheapest choice right now. The commons are extremely accessible right now. I just personally bought a play set of first edition. Uh, original commons myself just to have just to play not really a big deal because you can see star market price for the ultras is like four five six bones and if you're gonna play this you're probably gonna play three depend potentially and depending on what other cards you want to proc um now granted the original commons there is the mega 25 mega Mega 2015, can't speak today. Uh, mirrored reprint is a common, and the original Primal Origin uh, First Edition commons. I personally think you guys should get these. Again, I don't know if this is going to be the side deck choice card, if it's going to be the top of the top or not. These are like well under a dollar even for bulk prices, so just go ahead and nab that up. Again, I think this is going to be um, a potential choice. And then another one is going to be Stygian Deer J, or however you pronounce this. It sounds like French or something like that. This is not technically a solo print even though it's reflecting that here on TCGP. There are those like Duelist League, very strange like red, blue, and all those weird rainbow colors um, which are significantly more expensive than this one. So then this already starting market price is very expensive. Um, I think this card has the potential to perform very, very well. It's a Floodgates, Continuous Trap. Um, unfortunately, there's just not a lot of availability for this card and Unbeknownst until Sprite, this was like a nothing card. It was like well under a dollar, and now it's just obscenely expensive. It's been really chewed up on the market. Starting market price for common first editions is about 11 bones, starting market price all across the board here. And even for unlimited, it's still going to be roughly around that price, almost about a phantom under nine bones for unlimiteds, which is just disgusting. It's common, it's unlimited, and it's still worth this much. But who knows? If this card is going to overtopple and the band played on, we don't really know, but these are options that people are considering to side. So, you know, it's completely up to you guys. Um, personally, I'm not buying this. This is way too expensive of a common card for me to just potentially proc and maybe it being good because maybe it's not. Maybe another floodgate will be potentially be better against Splite, so um, that's just an option for you guys. Next is going to be some tier element stuff. So tier element highly rel relies on like a lot of decks nowadays, the graveyard. The graveyard is such a huge aspect, it's a powerhouse for the deck. If you take away the graveyard, specifically on their side, it's, it's pretty much game over, and we know that the longevity of this deck is going to be really, really good. It's going to be around for quite some time. It's going to be right up there for splites off the gates, and it's just going to continue to get better as the new support comes out for this, and I think it's going to be the fan favorite for meta popularity stronghold decks. 
one thing people are considering is Soul Drain. So we have significant choices for rarities on this. My personal favorite is the Astral Pack for Super Rares. There's also the Lost Art Promos, which were Ultra, and then the original Rares. Now, personally, I have several of the Supers. I was fortunate enough to pick these up in bulk prices. I have like about seven or nine of these that I picked up a long time ago for like around under two bones because no one was really talking about this card. But it's potentially rising to predominance now with tier elements. Now, starting market price for this actually is quite pricey. It's starting market price of 15 bones and can use trickle up after that. So kind of lost the bad wagon for the cheap train for that. Of course, there is the Lost Art promo. If you guys are into the Lost Art promos to change the orbs here um, into the actual like demon horns, but this isn't really going to fare much different. Starting market price is going to be about 18. That's going to quickly trickle up to about 20, 22 bones for this. So personally, um, again, I would personally run the, the supers, but it's completely up to you. So another side option floodgate that people are considering. Another thing that is really, really obscure, which I never really thought about before, is Dark Law. Now, Dark Law does not need to specifically be ran in a hero deck. You can still whip it out without being a hero player. And how might you do that, you might ask? Well, it's simple. You're going to use Mass Change 2. And unfortunately, there's total trash rarities of this. We have like Ghost of the Trash, we have Premium Trash, and then we have Common. So unfortunately, there's really not a lot of options on this. Personally, I bought Premium Trash Gold Trash because out of the options that we had, it's just the best that we have. I just am not a fan whatsoever for the Ghost of the Past Ultras. Um, this either but it was all it was the the you guys understand what i'm saying um so this is an option that you can bust out dark law and you don't need to be a hero player um so with mass change one you need to have a you need to send a hero card but with this you just need to send um a dark monster essentially and then you can proc out dark law so it's very generic you discard one you send a dark you proc dark law you completely annihilate their graveyard it's a very very like kind of like particular tech choice i think is really really good so that's an option i'm um, going back to dark law so obviously the ots1 ultimate rare is very unattainable there's not a lot on the market going for like 400 plus insanely expensive um if you guys want to drop several bills for that like be my guest i totally get it mean like you know like a rarity horror collector all that stuff personally i think the dual saga ultra rares are gorgeous and they aren't too incredibly pricey for what they are. I mean, being for Dual Saga, usually these cards run from like one to two to three to five, maybe 10 mid-range. Most of the stuff coming out of Dual Saga has always been relatively affordable, except for these onesie twosies throughout the years. It's an extremely old set and fantastic history, Marion. I just talk about the set all the time. You guys know I love the set. Um, 21 Bones, starting market price. There are several Italiano European prints, but if you want first English, it's gonna be 20, 21, starting market price. So I think even though that is quite pricey, pricey for a Dula Saga Ultra Rare. It is very aesthetically pleasing and the foil just pops very, very nice. The commons are for some reason like about even a little bit more than the supers. So you might as well get supers. I think that's your best bet. It's still hollow foil, even though it's from the structure deck. Again, this is personally what I got too. This is all for playability purposes. I just proc for a play set of first edition nightly plates because for the options that we have like i'm not going to spend 400 500 for the ultimate and i guess technically i could buy the dual saga but i've had so many and i've cycled cycled through them sold them trade them i'm just kind of like at the point where i don't really feel like spending you know 20 bones on uh, a dual, dual saga I'd, I'd rather actually just play the super so um again just at a, like a quick review um there's some italiana ones and then I got mine for, I think it was two. It was a little, like a Phantom Over 2 for my playset that I played first editions. That's kind of like gone now. Now they're pretty much around five bones for playsets. But again, you don't necessarily need a playset. I just bought a playset because I personally like Super Rare. I don't mind it. And I wanted to have enough to try out in different decks without having to swap over to different decks from extra deck. Um, but you can still get copies for roughly around three-ish bones for onesie twosie stacks of this Super Rare variant. Now, there is Mass Change, which... Again, this really struggles with rarity. The really only one that's significant to me is the Astral Pack 1. But the thing with this card is you have to send a specific hero card. So you have to be running some kind of like hero package or at least a particular dark hero monster to proc off Dark Law. So that's why I think that this one is 
Again, for hero players, it doesn't matter, but for the majority of the rest of us who aren't hero players, um, this card is really not going to be much of anything for us. Now, with that being said, um, the Astral Pack 1 being very the very first Astral Pack as a super rare and like the best holo foil that I think we have, personal white Mexican theory in the TCG, um, this is incredibly affordable. Um, let's check out for bulk prices because I think this is a pretty good steel deal. Well, obviously not for this five bone mark, but for like this under two bone mark, at least for the three. There probably used to be more of these, They're probably topped up on the market from those hero players, but I think that's a pretty good steel deal. But again, for playability purposes, everyone is going to be flocking to mast, mast change two. So, okay, um, next is going to be Dimensional Fisher. So, this does not get rid of all cards as with some of the other cards that I'm going to be showcasing after this, but it does get rid of monsters for the most part, and I don't really understand the ruling with XYZs and them detaching if they're still on the field. I don't know if they changed that ruling. It used to be that they wouldn't be sent because they weren't on the field, and I, just a whole conspiracy theory, but anyway... Um, this is the Secret Rare variants donning out of Legendary Collection 2. So there's a mirrored Secret Rare out of Raw, Yaw, Raw Yellow Mega Pack. It's always a tongue twister. I always mess that one up. Um, this one's a little bit older and it's still very much first edition secret so these have gone up a little bit they're about five bones for lightly played first editions and then near mints go up to about eight if we switch over to bulk prices um it increases significantly so again um these are cards that i've been picking up for quite some years now because they're really really great for collector's value you have the super rare from champion pack eight which why would you play as a collector's card but it does look aesthetically pleasing i actually just traded one of my local friends here um, my super rare copy for some other stuff. Um, again, there was the mirrored secret rares from Yaw Raw Yellow Mega Pack. I don't know why they would name this set this, um, which are roughly you know trailing behind the secret rares from Legendary Collection too. Um, there's also some Dusa valence uh, Dusa variants which are going for a couple bones too. So great side choice, but the Mac Daddy, I think in my personal opinion for tier elements, and again not everyone can play this because it's a double edged sword because it takes away your graveyard as well. I am very much an anti-meta player and I can run this day day or night and I love this card. Unfortunately it's still limited to one. I'm still waiting for the day that this comes to three. We got skill drain, now I'm just waiting for this card to come to three is going to be Macro Cosmos. Now, there's Ultra Rare variants, again, that were dawning from two different sets as well, but this is my personal favorite. It's the DT Rare, DT6 Rare, and these are about seven bones for 90 lightly played near mints for bulk prices there's a fat stack of 57 near mint for about seven i do not think that this is incredibly pricey seeing how old this is and seeing that it is dt and just what a powerhouse card this is and the potential of eventually this coming to two to three is just ridiculous so this is a real great powerhouse card one of like the top side cards i think again not everyone's gonna be able to play it but if you can it's gonna be pretty blowout we have the mirrored ultra rares again out of legendary collection 2 and raw yellow mega a pack which are going anywhere from two to four depending on um, bulk prices are probably gonna be a little bit more pricey and then you have the collector's dark revs super rares which are going you know from anywhere about 60 to 112 so a lot of really good stuff there banisher of the radiance is gonna be next so this again it cuts off the graveyard so you really have to be careful with your options when you're playing this card this is the highest rarity this is just a macrocosmos on legs this is the ultimate rare and for starting market price for ultimate rare first editions it's gonna be about 34 bones and then if you want near mints you can switch over to near mints and those are going to be about 90 bones so significant increase on the near mints if you're going to go ultimate go first edition i really don't understand why you'd go unlimited for this um if you're not going to go first edition now keep in mind there are also super rare variants i believe from dark revelations and also secret rares from one of the legendary collection sets as well but i'm running out of time here my alarm just went off i'm trying to cut down these videos so unfortunately you guys are going to have to do the footwork on your own for those other variants banisher of the light is going to be next so this is a gen 1 card going all the way back to generation 1 set 3 magic ruler insanely nostalgic insanely old basically a macrocosmos on legs just like banisher of the radiance except it's got a fat booty of 2k and a lowly attack of 100 
Um, it is a fairy, it is a light level 3, so, you know, it's got, like, kind of, like, this whole, like, Dragon Ball Z looking, like, Death Beam thing, which is pretty cool. And this start card is still extremely affordable, given for, like, its age. And even for first edition copies lately played, it's roughly around 3 bones, 4 bones, and trickles up, trickles up after that. If you want to switch over to bulk prices, that's probably where it's going to increase more. Not too much, about 3 bones, but then there's just 3 bone shipping and about 7 bones. So there are options out there. Um, this is the best rarity, all the other rarities. Well, there's the Spell Ruler, Mirror, it's super rare, but, you know, you guys know the whole Spell Ruler, Magic Ruler. Different Dimension Ground is going to be next. So this is basically a one-turn Macro Cosmos. Flip this on your opponent's turn, pretty much shut them down um, if they can't stop it. Now, this is the original first edition. And you'll notice there's a lot of rotation of these cards. A lot of these cards do the same thing, but there's little tweaks and aspects to each one to really kind of like fortify and really hone in what specifically you do and don't want to do and what you can and can't do against your opponent and what your deck can manage and handle. And that's why I wanted to kind of give you like a plethora of these cards. Um, I personally think this is the fate, my, the best variant. This is the Super Rares, the original prints out of the very infamous Star Strike Blast. First edition copies of this Lego player are going to be roughly around three bones, and near mints are going to be around four. There's five pages of availability. If you switch over to bulk prices, it's going to be again about three, and then it's going to jump to five. Now, personally, I have several of these. I really, really like this variant. There are two ultra rare variants, but they're utterly disgusting, so don't hate your life and get the supers. Next is going to be Dimension Shifter. So, I personally do not like this card. I don't like this card. It's a little too strong. It's not that I don't like this card. I would not personally run this card, because you have to open with this. If you're running a minimum of 40 card decks, and you're playing or proccing three Dimension Shifter, that's like a 37 to, to one ratio and you have to open this card if you don't open with this card you're going to be playing your unless you're again you're playing like a complete removal deck where you are lucky to not have a single card you can't have a single card in your graveyard you have to open this up turn you have to be going second you have to open this up first turn and i just think it's a luck card there's too much of a chance behind it it's too much of a dice roll and that's why i personally do not like this card it's a gorgeous card still the day of solo print prismatic secret very very gorgeous another thing is it's extremely popular right now and because it's extremely popular it's also very very expensive now not to say this isn't a terrible card obviously it's expensive for a reason a lot of players are flocking to it and using it because it's a good card um but for this upcoming meta i personally will not be running it and that's just kind of like my own white mexican theory and that's why i'm telling you like all these different removal cards that you can use ruffling starting market price is about 13 bones on the shifters and then, if you guys care, Vampire Lord, Dark Crisis, Generation 1, Seek Rares, First Editions have decreased just a little bit. So if you guys are a general collector like myself, you can pick up copies for about 75 bones. And then they're going to kind of trickle up more after that. And they're kind of pretty much gone. This is like the one, one last page of this card. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you've enjoyed this content, please share it with someone that you believe will also enjoy it. The world is a dark place and life is difficult. Please remember that you never know what others are enduring. Please remember to be a friend, be a brother, be a sister. I hope you guys are making some fantastic Yu-Gi-Oh! investments yourself. This has been a showcasing by The White Mexican, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.